Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'll cover an example of generating the differential equations of motion for a translating mass spring damper system. So let me draw a picture. We have two masses, M1 and M2, and M1 is connected to, to a wall at the left by a spring and a damper, K1 and B1. And the two masses are connected with a spring with stiffness K2. And I'll stick an external force on each of the masses also. What we're going to do is really pick this example apart. We're going to solve it in a, f in a few different ways uh, just to see that, um, that we can. So let's go ahead and define positive displacements for both of these masses in that direction, to the right. And I should probably make a note here that what x1 and x2, they are displacements of these masses from the unstretched, I'll abbreviate that, the unstretched configuration. So imagine this thing sitting on the floor and this is a rigid surface and it's frictionless so these things can these two blocks can slide on it without any uh, inhibition and what we're going to do is is define x1 and x2 as the motions relative to that unstretched configuration when there are no external forces applied to it okay so let's break out a couple free body diagrams here's m1 there's m2 and just to remind ourselves of the positive x1 and x2, as soon as we do that, by the way, we can put on our inertial forces, m1, x1, double dot, and m2, x2, double dot, in the opposite direction of our positive motion. And we can always remember that if we just take a peek at Newton's second law, we go F equals MA, and we throw the MA to the other side. That's our inertial force. And now we can think of the problem as a statics problem, where negative M times acceleration is thought of just as another external force. And so we have to put that in the opposite direction of our defined positive displacement. Okay, so enough about that. There's our inertial forces. And might as well put on the external forces because they're easy ones. And now for mass one, we can do the spring and the damper, K1 and B1. So imagine I take mass one and I move it just a wee bit to the right. So I'll give it a positive X1 displacement. And I'll document that by saying that we're giving x1 a small, or it could be a large also, but a positive displacement. If we do that, then pulling back on it, right, we will, we will have stretched the spring. It'll be in tension. And so there'll be a force pulling back on that mass to the tune of k1, x1. Similarly, if the mass was having a, a positive speed to the right, then there would be a force pulling back on it to the tune of b1 x1 dot. Okay, now let's get the force due to this spring k2. Now we need to have k2 or x2 also given some positive displacement if we want to sort this out in a consistent manner. So why don't we do this? We'll give, um, we'll just say that, that x2 is bigger than x1. We don't have to do that, but let's just do that just so we can sort this out. So x1 is given a, a displacement to the right, and x2 is even given a larger displacement to the right. So what happens is the spring that connects those two is also in tension. And so this one is going to be pulling to the tune of k2 x2 minus x1. And then we'll have an equal and opposite force pulling back on mass M2. And at this point, we're done. We can just write out these equations. We have M1, 
x1 double dot plus b1 x1 dot plus k1 x1 uh, minus k2 like so minus f1 equals zero and the second mass looks like that. And I can even draw a lopsided box around these and say that we're done generating those equations of motion. Great. Um, let's try this a different way. I sort of warned you that I was going to uh, pull this apart in a, in a few different directions. No pun intended. So we'll just start again with our free body diagram. M1 M2, and we'll do the same business where we say we'll give x1 a positive displacement. In order to sort the forces out uh, correctly, we need to give uh, mass 2 also a positive displacement to get that uh, connecting spring force. But in this case, what I'll do is, is I'll make x2 less than x1, but still greater than 0. So imagine x1, you know, I move it um, uh, 10 centimeters to the right, and I move... Um, x2 uh, one centimeter to the right. Okay, so let's put on our positive um, uh, motions, x1 and x2, and then I can immediately do this, my inertial forces. I can go ahead and put on my externally applied forces, F2 and F1. And over here, my forces due to the spring connected to the wall and the damper connected to the wall, they don't change. But now, if I give X1 a little displacement and uh, X2 even, you know, a, a small positive displacement, then what I'm going to have is a spring force between these two that looks like this. So again, imagine I give x1 um, a, a 10 centimeter displacement and I give x2 a 1 centimeter displacement, both in that positive direction. So if for a second we say that x2 is held still I didn't displace it at all, and I displaced x1 by 10 centimeters, I would have a force pushing back on it, like so. The spring would be in compression. But now, since I allow x2 to essentially relax a little bit in the right to the right, one centimeter, that force gets a little bit smaller, x1 minus that x2 that allowed it to relax a little bit. Still, the spring is in compression, so I have this uh, force pushing back on both masses, M1 and M2, as shown. So now I can go ahead and write out the equations. M1x1 double dot plus B1x1 dot plus K1x1 plus K2x1 minus X2 minus F1 equals zero. And for the other mass, I get these two equations, which is exactly the same as what we had on the previous page. The only difference is that the, the uh, sign is flipped in here and also in front of the K2. So very consistent, exactly the same equations just written in a slightly different form. Okay, so let's take this one one step further. We're going to solve it one more time. This time, and we'll start with the free body diagrams, we'll define this direction again as x1, and for our other mass, let's define this direction as being z2. So it's in the opposite direction.
that we had before. This is our M1 and this is our M2. As soon as I define those displacements, positive displacements, I can put in my inertial accelerations in the opposite directions. And um, I can put on my externally applied forces. That's always nice to do. And over here, again, this is getting kind of boring at this point. Um, my force due to the spring and the damper connected to the wall doesn't change. But now we have that interaction force. So imagine I give both x1 and z2 a positive displacement. So, so mass 1 moves to the right a little bit, and mass 2 moves to the left a little bit. The spring is in compression again, and I'll have forces pushing back on both masses like that. But now, they are to the tune of x1 plus z2. Right? So if I held mass 2 constant and I pushed x1 a little bit, then I would have a compressive, compressive force of k2 times x1. But if I also moved z, the mass 2 a little bit more to the left in the positive direction, I would increase that force by plus z2. So I'm done, and I can write out these equations. Look at that. And now the second one. Now, are these equations the same as what we had before? The answer is yes. And the way that we can convince ourselves of that is that we can just do a coordinate transformation. We know that z2 is really defined as, or it's equal to, negative x2. And z2 double dot is then negative x2 double dot. And if we make those two substitutions in these two equations, then what we get is the following. Oops, that shouldn't be an x2, that should be an x1. And I'll box these two, try to catch them. Okay, there we go. The first equation is exactly what we had on the previous page. The second equation, if we flip the sign of everything, boom, 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 now we get exactly the same equation that we had on the previous page. So indeed they're the same. Okay, so what we saw on here is a systematic way of generating uh, the differential equations that describe the motion of translating mass spring damper systems. Things to keep in mind are you want to define uh, your variables of motion or generalized coordinates. Make sure that you assign the inertial forces to your free body diagrams consistent with those, and then lather up the free body diagrams with all the rest of the forces. And if you ever get in doubt about what's happening with these interaction forces, like the spring that connects M1 and M2, then go ahead and assign those positive displacements for both of them. And if you need to, mentally zero out one of those forces because it's always easier to just think of one displacement as opposed to two, and make sure that the um, uh, compression or tension of the spring is consistent with what you think should be happening. Okay, again, my name is Gordon Parker, and thanks for watching.